You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Christopher Hines hosts a great podcast called Pod Central. Chris, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. We help you launch, grow, or monetize your podcast. We even help those podcast business owners out there grow their agencies and get more clients. This is a place where you come to learn everything podcasting. Wow. Where can people subscribe? Search for the podcast wherever you listen to your shows or find me on Twitter at Chris Podcasting and I can send it to you directly or go to marketingpodcasts.net on this episode of Winfluence. I, for a time there, was letting like analytics and views and all of that run my life. And actually, my views were worse in that respect because I think I was too stressed and I was too focused, even just in my normal daily life. And then it's like, oh, and then I have this conference and then I got to go here and I got to do this. Like, I was still working 40 hours a week and then traveling for conferences over the weekend. Now, literally, I rarely ever look at my analytics. It's only when like my publicist or my agent and they're like, hey, what are your analytics? I was like, oh, yeah, those. (laughs) There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls. And in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. The world of content creators is far more diverse than you think. I've personally worked with influential voices who produce furniture, pour concrete, sell steel cages in warehouses. There are creators out there for every niche and business vertical. Occasionally on Winfluence, we like to bring a content creator on the show to explore how they built their brand, but for our brand and agency folks, I also like to ask them how they partner with brands, what makes a collaboration work well, and such. I find it helpful for us to see different approaches that we might incorporate into our influence marketing plans as well. Corina Layton has built a fairly impressive social footprint on Instagram and TikTok. She's young, attractive, has a dog, and lots of the other elements of the living your best life influencer crowd has, and some of her content is that interesting lifestyle mix. But her core content is that of being a dental hygienist. With 2.4 million TikTok followers and another 125,000 or so on Instagram, she may be the most popular dental hygienist in the world. She's done some very interesting brand partnerships and connected with brands in the dental care space and has a unique perspective brands and agencies can learn from. Of course, you prospective creators out there can pick up some inspiration today as well. A fun conversation coming up with the tooth fairy, Karina Layton on Winfluence. This program is made possible by Scipio.ai. You know by now I've recently joined the company as Executive Vice President for Marketing, so it makes sense that Scipio.ai becomes the presenting sponsor of the show. Scipio.ai is a community commerce marketing platform. It has a family of applications that help you drive commerce through your own community. One of those taps into a big theme for 2023 for both brands and creators, and that is efficiency. Whether you're a brand or creator, you probably spend a lot of time writing and rewriting captions for social media content. You also have to make sure that content will perform well by keeping up with the trends across social media, right? Our gift to you this holiday season is a solution called VibeCheck. Think of it as an AI content generator with an extra brain for optimizing social media posts and predicting success. Tell VibeCheck the idea of your post or even campaign. Give it a call to action, the tone of voice you prefer, and the length of the word count. With the push of a button, you'll have a library of smart content recommendations with predictive analysis of how that post will perform. VibeCheck's powerful AI engine digs into the big data of over 140 million social media users, posts, images, and videos. It mines that data for deep learning insights to give you not just content, but content that will perform. That makes it very different from other AI content generators out there. Now, you know I'm not a fan of automating content creation, but that's not the point. VibeCheck produces a ton of great content to save you writing time. You still need to review and edit it. Make sure it's perfect, but it gets you 90% of the way there, which saves you time. 
Scipio.ai wants to give you that power as a holiday gift. Sign up for a two-week free trial, no credit card required. Go to jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck, V-I-B-E-C-H-E-C-K. jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck and start creating all the captions and content you need with the click of a button. Free for two weeks. Just see if you like it. I'm betting you will. JasonFalls.co slash VibeCheck. Seriously, this will change the game. If you write a lot or have a lot of clients you need to write for, check it out. JasonFalls.co slash VibeCheck. How one dental hygienist amassed over 2.5 million online followers and what she has to say about brands, collaborations, creating, and more. Karina Layton, the Tooth Fairy, is next on Winfluence. Hey gang, have you ever tried to manage a project over email? Things work well enough at the beginning, but if you start adding more than a couple of people or sharing more than a couple of files, the entire project becomes disorganized. Now, managing projects is tough enough. It's a struggle to juggle all the people, all the work, the expectations, and certainly to do that under pressure. Problem with many project management software platforms, though, is that they make it even harder by overcomplicating things. UX design is important because if you have that confusion and complication, then you let go of the tool. The promise fades, the frustration sets in. That That's when teams turn to Basecamp. Famously straightforward and effective teams stick with it and projects thrive on it. Basecamp makes collaborating on projects without having to waste time. Teams that use Basecamp send less emails and have fewer meetings. If you are struggling with projects, sign up for Basecamp. Their pricing is simple and they give you all their features in a single plan. No upsells, no upgrades. Go to Basecamp.com slash Winfluence and try Basecamp for free. No credit card required. Cancel anytime. Basecamp.com slash Winfluence. Karina, I think the fun irony in your story is that a dental hygienist is probably one of the last people we expect to see social media content coming from. Yet here you are with 2.3 million followers on TikTok, another 115,000 or so on Instagram. I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're probably the most popular dental hygienist in the history of the world. (laughs) So tell us how you got started doing this. Yeah, so I got started like a year and a half, two years ago, maybe. Honestly, right during the pandemic, the height of the, you know, pandemic was when everybody, we were all bored out of our minds. We were all just taken to TikTok. And even now I will hear those like trending sounds back. And it just like has like a special place in my heart of nostalgia for me. But no, I started really actually taking like TikTok seriously when I moved to Philadelphia and started my job. And then when I did a video, it was just a trend. Things that patients like say to me every single day. And it's like, and you just like do this trend. And then everyone was like, what on earth is that chair that she's sitting on? (laughs) And that (laughs) is kind of, I guess, where my claim to fame was, was my saddle chair, which I've since then moved out of Philly. And I like purchased my chair from my doctor because you have to get it through like a Henry Shiner Patterson, like these bigger companies. And so I was like, well, I'm taking it with me because I'm not going to go through the hassle of having to (laughs) try to get it again. And so literally it's like sitting in my room. It's actually like behind me, but (laughs) so that I guess is kind of like how it started. And then it's just progressed from there. And I love to educate. That's my main thing is taking to social media to educate and to be able to kind of just show who I am and that us dental people, like I promise we're not out here to hurt you, but everybody thinks that we are. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just so you know, my dental hygienist is named Tina and I call her Tina the tooth terrorist. So um, (laughs) it's all friendly, good fun. I like her plenty, but yeah, Yeah. it's not the most pleasant thing you have to do, but you have to do it. I'm curious, why do you think you've been able to build such a big following? And I don't mean this disrespectfully at all, but when I look at your content, I see a few things. First of all, your main dental hygiene content is unique. There's not a lot of dental hygienists out there creating content that I've found. So you got that going for you. But that's not like a vertical like fashion or beauty that's like overrun with content creators. I also see a Gen Zer, I guess, living her best life. So there's that content that appeals to that age group. I see a good mix of work and life, which is appealing for followers, maybe not as much for brands who are hoping you've got a really concentrated audience of all dental hygiene practitioners, maybe. You mix in your dog, you've got some good food content. There's a lot of variety there, which most people who do this would say is not the best way to build a loyal following. Yeah. Is there something that ties all that together that you attribute your following to, or is it maybe the variety? 
so more recently, just because I have moved out of Philly is that I've been just posting because right now, I mean, I'm just waiting for my dental hygiene license to come in. So it's like right now, I'm just kind of like taking my followers on this journey of just yeah, living my best life, and just being comfortable in my own skin and going out and having lunch by myself if I want to, you know, kind of things like that. But for the most part, I do agree, I typically stay within that dental niche. I don't usually expand out as nearly as much as I have now because those videos just didn't do well because people didn't follow me for my life. But like they're kind of getting to that point that they're starting to see like, oh, she's actually maybe doing this or whatever. And I would say like I have attracted followers, I guess, in a sense, like people follow me. I read the comments and people are like, oh, like she's hot or, you know, they'll just say stuff like that. So it's like, yes, of course, that's a factor in it. Or it's just, I have a lot of actual like dental people and I get a lot of like dental questions and usually I'll just like message them like directly because I feel like that's the best way if it's something specific. But no, I kind of have like a very wide variety of followers, but I don't know. I think I'm a very social butterfly type of a person. I mean, I'm like, if I can share kind of all little aspects of my life, the people who are interested in it, they'll follow and the people who aren't, they will unfollow. And that's I'm just where I'm at. That's how it goes. I think the underlying thing I think that ties it all together is just your personality. You know, whether you're a dental hygienist or whether you quit that and go be a fashion designer or whatever, the personality is what brings people along. Now, I know you spend some time, you mentioned on TikToks, replying to fan questions and even respond. You even respond to some of the dumb stuff people post, which I applaud you for. I think that part of your appeal is that you keep your fans in check as much as they do you. So, I'm curious, how do you strike that balance between content that's within the guardrails of kind of the dental hygiene, the overt reason people may follow you, and that personality type content that isn't teeth related? I think that's like a tough question. So if someone's just being very blatantly rude to me the other day, and I literally like straight up got out of bed and was like, this person's clearly just trying to pick a fight with me. I will post on my Instagram on my story if someone is bashing me, calling me names or whatever, I will screenshot it. And I will be like, FYI, just keep all y'all in check. You ever send me a message even remotely like this, I will block you. I don't care. And then I like, usually just like put a little like snarky, whatever, something sassy. That's just like my personality. Like one of them was like, Oh, like, blah, 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 like quit showing your butt or whatever. And I was like, well, maybe if it wasn't so big, like it wouldn't be easier to hide, like, sorry, you know, and then people are like, Oh, like a plus on the, you know, comment back or people are supportive. And they're like, just you do you like, screw those people. And so I try to just be authentic and be myself. And I think once again, if I'm able to show that I am human too, that other people will come forward because TikTok's a wonderful platform. If like you're going through something or whatever, there's so many other people out there who are probably going through the exact same thing too. How deeply do you dive into analytics and let the data guide what you post when you post it? Or are you one of those people who just publishes what you feel good about in the moment? Yep. That's pretty much it. I, for a time there was letting like analytics and views and all of that run my life. And actually my views were worse in that respect because I think I was too stressed and I was too focused, even just in my normal daily life. And then it's like, oh, and then I have this conference and then I got to go here and I got to do this. Like I was still working when I was in Philly, but I was working 40 hours a week, you know, and then traveling for conferences over the weekend that it's like some months I would work, conference, come back Monday, work, <laughs> or travel. Like, I was just so stress because I want to always perform my best for my job, whether that be I'm traveling to a conference to represent a brand or I'm doing a brand deal and posting about it. I want it to be my best number one, so that they'll hopefully resign. And you know, it's a form of income, but also just to continue to just build that professional relationship. Cause very much so I don't want to be on TikTok forever. I will be on TikTok, but I don't want that to be, you know, kind of like where my everything is coming from. So I try now, literally, I rarely ever look at my analytics. It's only when like my publicist or my agent and they're like, Hey, like, <laughs> what are your analytics? And I was like, Oh yeah, those <laughs> screenshots. And those. Got somebody to look at them for you. That's even better. At the same time, just to kind of give the content creators who are listening out there a little bit of background and inspiration, maybe, 
are you posting content throughout the day as it comes, or do you sit down and plan a calendar and think of things to shoot and post ahead of time? How much of the process of being a content creator is formal versus, oh, that's a good idea. Let me film that and post it real quick. Yeah. So if I haven't posted anything and I see some trend or whatever come up, I will instantly do it, edit it right then and there, post it. Cause I was like, shoot, I have to put out content for today. And this was mainly around like the holidays, this past holiday season, there were a ton of trends where it was more like interactive trends where now a lot of the trends are voiceovers. And so it's changing the like type of trends that like we're seeing. And so the kind of acting-ish, I guess, ones that were more interactive just over this past holiday season. I mean, I would sit down like at the end of my day, my doctors are just like doing notes, whatever, like I'm clocked out and I'm literally batching content. And I would do that for multiple days. I don't like to usually post multiple videos in the same scrubs during the day. I want it to, people look on my profile, they just see uniqueness, not like, oh man, she posted six videos and that singular, like I'm desperate or, you know, whatever. And so I try to batch content on different days that I'm in different colored scrubs. And then I just periodically throughout my day, I'm like, what am I feeling? And I look at my drafts and I'm like, hmm, that's a good one for today. And I will like overlay text so that I can easily come back to it in my draft. I don't have to rewatch the video, but I'll be like, oh, like, just whatever the trend kind of is just a rough idea so that I, I at least know otherwise it just wastes time and I try not to people are like oh you need to get off social media like you spend way too much time on it and I was like honestly like for a content creator I really don't I try to like have a good work life balance but also yeah you have the informal posting right then and there if I haven't posted anything otherwise I try to kind of like just periodically post throughout the day kind of different trends different style of trends good to know we're talking to Karina Layton. She is Karina underscore 907 on Instagram and TikTok and likely the world's most well-loved dental hygienist. I mean, name another one that has two and a half million followers online. When we come back, I want to get into the nitty gritty of brand partnerships and the balance between the career that got her here and the career of creating. Stay tuned. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Christy Smallwood hosts a great podcast called Small Business Success Talk. Christy. Tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Well, you get the feeling of not being alone and building a small business. <laughs> My guests have shared their success stories, their biggest challenges, their best practices, the passion for what they do, and what success really means for them. It's a mix of mindset, heart, and how-tos for the small business community to learn from each other. Awesome. Where can people subscribe? You can go to smallbusinesssuccesstalk.biz, or you can find the show at marketingpodcasts.net, or you can search for small business success talk wherever you get your podcasts you heard her go subscribe welcome back to windfluence talking to karina layton today she is a tiktok celebrity star person she just did a virtual teeth cleaning for me during the break which is much less painful than tina the tooth terrorist i see regularly here in louisville Tina will love getting a mention on the show, I'm sure. Karina is a dental hygienist who has amassed over two and a half million followers on social media, giving people tips and tricks about taking care of their chompers. Karina, we were talking about how you manage and create content before the break. Let's shift now to how you manage the dual careers you have. You are a dental hygienist, but you're also now a very successful and monetizable content creator. You work with an agent or management firm. You do brand deals and such. Is there a point where that career overtakes the other career, which is what got you here? And do you worry about going all in on content creation that that may hurt your following in some way since dental hygiene is the horse you rode in on? Yeah, that's honestly, that's a really good question. So first and foremost, I love my job as a dental hygienist. And I feel like that is portrayed in my videos when I'm either talking about whatever it may be. I think always, I will probably always work one or two days a week, like if it ever came down to it. I definitely get stressed. I know that previously I was like 40 hours a week dental hygienist. Like people are like, oh, like she must be part-time, like only works a couple days. No. 40 hours a week, like full time, nine to five. I got a nine to five. And then it's lunch breaks. It's at the end of the day, creating content or coming in early and creating content for brand deals. I try to always shoot stuff like when I'm by myself because I'm just more comfortable 
if I'm doing like a brand deal so that it's quiet, you don't have the pumps on running in the background and there's that. And then it's like I said, I travel to then go to dental conferences to either speak on product or to just stand at a booth and help educate and kind of more of a, I guess, a sales role, which a lot of dental hygienists actually end up shifting to because hence the saddle stool, it's for ergonomics. If we have bad ergonomics, musculoskeletal disorders. So for me, I will always be just repping ergonomics forever. But it's like I kind of have like all these three different things in my life. I don't necessarily think that content creation will like overshadow my dental hygiene job just because I really, really love my job that I don't think I would ever give that up. But I can definitely see in the future, just maybe temping. So like being a temp hygienist, just filling in if somebody like has to go and like, I mean, I have my own saddle chair now, like you can green screen stuff on the back. I know a lot of people do that just to kind of get creative in how they create content. But at the end of the day, I'm a dental hygienist and dental hygienist first, content creator second. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's really refreshing to hear that because it's easy for people when they create content and they get a following and they tap into a trend and suddenly they have a big audience on, online. It's easy for the ego to take over. It's easy for you to get distracted by, ooh, 2.3 million followers. Well, that means I can monetize that and I don't need to worry about this other thing anymore or there's more money over here. It's really refreshing to hear someone who's like, no, this is what I do. That thing's just something that happened and I enjoy it, but this is who I am. Dental hygiene school was hard, so how to make it worth it, right? <laughs> I'm sure. Now, your following obviously is big enough to justify having help. You've got a talent management firm or agency that helps you. When did you make the shift to having that talent management assistance? And did you go looking for it or did they come to you? How'd that all happen for you? Yeah. So my agent actually found me and messaged me on Instagram. And I was like, this is shady. I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not giving you my personal information. But no, like it was October of 2020. And then more recently, because now I'm in the process of working with them. And then I hired a publicist, which is how we got in contact in the PR agency. So then now they're helping me get into more like kind of just these authentic interactions where it's once again, I'm like I said, I don't want to be on TikTok forever. You know, like as in that respect, I will eventually grow up. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But they reached out to me. I found my PR agency. That was all me. But no, my agent, yeah, he found me and they've been great. And I mean, some deals are a lot. They're with huge companies and others are like, not a lot because it's just a startup. And for me, if I believe in something, I'm not going to like discriminate based off of what they're going to pay. It just depends on what's the deliverable that they want, because it is also like time and effort. It's a job you have to, I want to always be worthy of my wage, but also there needs to be that mutual respect with brands and myself. Well, and I want to ask you a little bit more about that too. I mean, you're obviously a superstar in the dental world and I've seen that you've even been invited to rep and speak at conferences and trade shows. You mentioned that earlier as well. What's your litmus test for brands that you'll collaborate with? Do they need to really be hyper-focused on dental care and that world, or do you expand out to other products and services and what makes those a good fit for you? Yeah, great question. So there's a couple companies that have reached out to me. I'm not going to say it, but I don't believe in their product, like big dental companies. One of them, I was like, oh, like my doctor actually used something competitive right now. So I don't want to interfere with my job and, you know, do this brand deal with you. Like, I guess kind of like, eh, like a little white lie. It's true. <laughs> but I mean, I try to just be like as polite and respectful that I can when I'm turning something down. But if I'm not totally 100% about it, but I'm like, at the end of the day, it's a job. Like we don't always love our job. Like I tell my agent and I'm like, you double check and make sure that they will do that. They are okay with a review style, like deliverable in a sense, opposed to, oh, I love this product. You have to go buy it. No. All right. I tried it. This thing is kind of weird, but you know, I mean, to each their own. I say, you know, if you want, try it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just something new to kind of add into your daily routine, you know, whatever, like stuff like that. And so that's kind of where I'll have like a little bit more play because there's just some content creators out there that it's like, I'll even watch them like brush their teeth with their brand deal that they got with an electric toothbrush. And I'm like, you're not even brushing correctly. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you brushing back and forth? If it's an electric toothbrush, it does the work for you. It's electric. Like you just hold it in a spot. It's a bobble and a drag. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm writing that bobble and a drag. <laughs> bobble and drag, 45 degree angle. If you got a regular one, if you got the round brush head, it's a rock and a roll around the, every individual tooth. 
Okay. All right. Well, I use an electric toothbrush, so now I'll use it smarter and stop moving my arm. So when you're walking into a collaboration with a brand, do you find that they rely on you to come up with the idea or execution or are brands bringing more of a perspective of here's what we want you to do approach and and which one works better for you? If I get deals, so I'm like non-exclusive with my agent. So that's where like I can do things on my own as well. So I don't know the dynamic of how like my agent does that. Cause then yes, they outline everything. They have a whole contract, lawyers and whatever that go over everything. I look at the creative brief that they give and then they want me to just generate a concept based off of that creative brief. When it comes just to me, what I do is I ask them, I'm like, what are you looking for that you think that I can do for you? That's one of my first questions. I had like a real estate company reach out to me. I was like, how? I turned it down. I asked them, I was like, I don't personally know how I can benefit you. I was like, that's not my niche. I don't want to waste your money. I don't want to waste my time. You know what I mean? Kind of things like that. But I will just ask them, what can I do for you? What are you looking for? If they're like, oh, we want like four TikToks and blah, 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 blah. And and we can pay you this much. And it's a lot less, you know, than what I would typically charge. And so that's where it's like, then I have a conversation. I was like, all right, well, based off of these deliverables, there's similar videos that I have done. These were kind of how much it was. Once again, just being very respectful because not every brand will have the budget that these huge companies that are owning everything, you know what I mean? That will have. So it's like, I have to kind of judge based off of like what I charge the brand and things like that. Cause I don't want to just be that person. That's like, Oh my gosh, like she thinks she's all this. And so then I figure that out and we kind of come to a conclusion. I had one that they were like, we want it. I hundred percent thought they were catering it to the consumer. And they were like, Oh no, like we want to cater to the dental professional, which is a totally different shift in like all type of deals that I've had. And I was like, okay. And so I drafted up a brand new concept. I got on the phone with their person who's in charge of like the kind of like the sciencey sales behind this that I would know a little bit more. I, I've used the product, but I guess I didn't know nearly as much as I thought that I knew about it. And so that also kind of helps. I love getting deals on things that I already use because then I can really back it if I like it. But so then I shifted all entirely the style of content. They approve it. I send a draft with like one round of, of like revisions usually. And then they're like, okay, you're good to post whenever during the times that you think are best to post. So it's not like I'm going to post at like 2 a.m. in the morning. Well, again, very refreshing to hear because a lot of creators will just say, okay, I'll take the brief and I'll figure it out. They don't ask questions. They don't try to learn more about the product. And, and that obviously comes out in the quality of the engagement and surfaces in the metrics too. It's just not as good. So good for you. Well, Karina, thank you so much for sharing your ideas and insights with us. I know the brands and agencies listening appreciate that. Certainly the content creators out there have been taking some notes today too. I really appreciate you sharing all that with us. Where can people find you on the interwebs if they want to follow, connect, or collaborate? I, on the interwebs, I am on Instagram and TikTok. (laughs) And that is Karina, C-O-R-I-N-A underscore 907, which is the Alaska area code, which is where I'm from. All right, sweet. Now I got to go floss. As you should. As you should. (laughs) I'm guessing that's the most comfortable conversation you've ever had with a dental hygienist, right? Great stuff there from Karina. Thanks to her for coming on the show. Links to all of her channels, TikTok, Instagram, and more are on our show notes page at jasonfalls.co slash Karina Layton. Also, if you're ever looking for a past episode, you can just type in jasonfalls.co and the name of the guest to get there. So that should work in most cases. Again, this episode is jasonfalls.co slash Corina Layton. You can also go to jasonfalls.com, click on articles and find it there. Don't forget to completely change the way you produce social media content for the better. Get Vibe Check from Scipio.ai. Two-week free trial, no credit card required. It all awaits you at jasonfalls.co slash Vibe Check. And to help us create a bigger and better vibe here on the show, tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them. You can also help make a future episode of Winfluence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. 
I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners and presented by Scipio.ai. The technical production is by MPN Studios. Winfluence airs along MPN, the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Colin Jeffries and Eric Reed host a great podcast called the Rethink Marketing Podcast. Colin, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Well, Jason, on the Rethink Marketing Podcast, we unpack the myths, misconceptions, and flat-out lies of marketing and sales. Our listeners tell us that we help bring different perspectives to common business growth, wisdom, and advice. That's great. Where can people subscribe? They can subscribe at RethinkMarketingPodcast.com or listen on their favorite podcast platform, including MarketingPodcasts.net. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit MarketingPodcasts.net.